Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to show you how to build an every mod box or an adjustable tuning box for older indirect injection turbo diesels such as the Mercedes OM605 and 606 found in the C250 TD and the E300 TD. It will also work on E34 BMWs with the M51 turbo diesel 6 cylinder. It will work in E36s with the 6 cylinder turbo diesel in and the 318 TDS, the 4 cylinder. It will work on Golf Mark 3s, the TDIs. It will work on the earlier ones, not the common rail or the PD ones. Basically what it is, is a variable resistor and a switch to turn it off and on. The variable resistor fools the rack position sensor in the diesel pump causing it to increase fueling um, and gains of up to 40 horsepower, 50 horsepower can be made on the six cylinder diesels such as the Mercedes and the BMW with a small boost increase also. It costs about nine English pounds to make the box. It consists of a hobby box, a switch and a variable resistor. All of these can be got from an electrical factor such as Maplin or what have you. And um, yeah, biggest bang for buck in a diesel. It helps you roll coal. And uh, for the money you can't go wrong. And for this job you're going to need a two-way switch. You're also going to need a hobby box to stick it in, a 1k variable resistor and a regular resistor, I'm using a 250 ohm one, uh, it's just to stop the resistance getting too low and damaging the diesel pump and that's pretty much all the hardware, you'll need a little bit of wire as well um, tools wise you're going to need a soldering iron, uh, corded or cordless doesn't really matter, some solder wire, uh, some cutters and I've always got a multimeter on hand as well, it's always very handy and um, a pot of flux as well to get the wire to grab and that's about it um, I'm wanting the variable resistor to wind down as you turn it up so the, the more clockwise you turn it the more smoke and more power you get so you put a loop between contact 1 and contact 2 on the variable resistor so that as you wind it clockwise the resistance goes down so we're going to solder that up now and <laughs> fuck this thing, it's fucked mmm, forget that Right, well, we're back with take two with a proper soldering iron, not the shit I was using beforehand. Wasn't worth the light. So, as I was saying, you solder these two to the first pin. So now we're going to solder the second pin back to itself like that. And uh, then as you turn the pot clockwise, the resistance will drop, which is what we want, because clockwise it was more boost, more diesel, more smoke, more power, rolling coal and all that. Right, so hang that back in there. I'll just... There we go. Hey, that's done, thank Christ. Look at that. <coughs> Spotty dog, that is. Uh, 
Right, so that's the pot all soldered up, or the variable resistor, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, so now we'll put the switch to it, so we can switch it on and off, because you might not want it running all the time. You know, you can't be blowing coal all the time, it's a waste of diesel. Hit his jugular with the drill. Mm, I need you can't be having it. Mm. On the switch, it's got power and accessory. They're the two that we're going to jump onto. Because mm -hmm. if you hit the ground, it's got a light in the switch. We don't want the light to run because it'll be running off the five volts from the signal. We don't want that. So solder that up. And we'll crack on. No. As you do, we slip with the drill a bit, put it through the table, you know, things like that. Yeah, you know, f five pound for a tuning box, four hundred pound for a new table. Cheap better get a remap. Standard issue. <laughs> Unbelievable. One step forward. Get that away from you. <laughs> right, that's soldered onto there, pretty tight. We're happy with that. So now we'll run the rest of the cable. Rest of the cable. Mm -hmm. And we're going to bear it off, attach it to the switch, and that's the circuit pretty much done. Apart from adding a little resistor for a safety, like I said before. Cost. Nice notable tip is that the diameter of the nut for the switch is obviously the same diameter as the threads. So we size it up. Just bang your drill bit through like that. Beautiful. And then you get a hole in the hobby box. Like so. For the uh, pot to go through, so that that should sit into the housing, like so. And there you go. Look, I mean it's a bit crooked now, but it'll be sound when it comes back in. It'll be sound. Don't worry about it. It'll be costly. Couldn't be better. Oh, that's solid. Oh, jobs are good. So that's that sorted. So we can put them in the hobby box now and uh, attach our little, our little safety resistor, which is 250 or more. It's 270, but let's say 250. And uh, just to stop the resistance is getting too low, blowing the carter bits. All the bad things such as that. Lovely look at that. So as you can see, resistors in there now on the end of it. Lovely. I'll swing that that way because we'll send the wires out that side of the box. And uh, I'll curl the end over so we've got something to solder to. Like so. And then stick it in the jaws.
what's going on. It comes up and through the wires into the pot variable resistor, through the variable resistor into the switch, and then back out the switch with two tails coming off at these two tails. These two ends will eventually be getting connected to either the diesel pump harness, pins number two and three, or the ECU. Depending on what vehicle it is, it's two and three on BMWs and uh, six and seven on Mercedes uh, OM 605, 606s. Um, not sure about your VWs, so you'll have to check yourselves. I take no responsibility for you blowing your ECU or your diesel pump to pieces. You do this at your own risk. But before I do that, I'm going to put some heat shrink. I'm going to put some heat shrink on the resistor to strengthen it a bit because it's flopping about like a donkey's dick. So I'm going to stick some heat shrink on. Save about that much. Give it a snipperoo. And we'll feed that onto the cable. Like so. And just so that the uh, so that the resistor doesn't snap. As you can see, we've got the two holes drilled. Perfectly symmetrical in every way, as you can see. Yep, done. Done with a you know one-eyed man on a galloping horse wouldn't notice. Look at that, the drill bit wasn't big enough. Oh, it was indeed. Was it? Yeah, watch out, really. Probably. Oh, here's where someone loses a finger or a wrist or a hand. Bloody hell. Is it yeah? Nah, I can't. Nah. The drill bit's fairly. That's just what Slightly longer than how old this, mate. No, no. I'll tell you what it is, it's a Dewalt chuck, is what that nah, is. No, don't blame Dewalt for your own stupidity. Here's where we'll lose a finger. If you can't throw me cables like I'm ballistic. Hey, high tech that. Right, he's reamed it with a drill bit, proper high tech that. Oh aye. Fucking plastic all over the place. Where was I going with this? I can't remember now. I think it was like that. Try again. Oh, it's gone this time. But anyway, that's how it's going to sit. The uh, knob's going to go a little bit further down than that, and it will go from 
very little smoke to full smoke and obviously a switch to activate it. So as you can see, there's zero, so that's open circuit. Tell a lie that's it on. Either end to the multimeter. So that's it switched on. That's it. It's its lowest, uh, sorry, its highest resistance, which is the least smoke. And then as you wind it down, you'll see the values change. And it'll go all the way down to 270 or thereabouts. There you go, 270. Now that should be plenty enough diesel to make at least a 40 horsepower gain, I'm guessing. Um, because it'll not be gone on the dyno, because there's a haggard old parcel. Uh, but yeah, that should be, you know, easily, easily a hundred brake difference. Oh, hundred <laughs> horsepower at least. Hundred horsepower. Get your Chinese boost controller on there, maybe two hundred. <laughs>